It's a 10 out of 10. Review it again. A 10 out of 10. Review it again. A 10 out of 10. What do you want? We're not going to stop protesting till you give the Nem Nem album the proper score it deserves. A 10 out of 10. Review it again. 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 Hi, everyone. Bethany Scortano here, the Internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new George Clanton album, Slide. This is the new full-length LP from New York-based singer, songwriter, producer, George Clanton, who has been dropping music for a while now under a number of different names and bands. At one point, Mirror Kisses and Kids Garden when he was more of a fixture in the Virginia music scene. But George also releases music currently, I believe, under the name Esprit as well, which if you take a look at the front covers of records like Virtua.zip and 200% Electronica, it should be no surprise that on these releases, George dabbles in a bit of vaporwave, uh, in a bit of chill wave. Those genres and more inform the music under his own name as well on this new album, on which they kind of reach a point of culmination and refinement. While some vaporwave and new age aesthetics do inform the the sound of, of Slide. This album is also a healthy exercise in synth pop, bedroom pop, alternative dance, and shoegaze too. There's a touch of hypnagogic pop on this record as well, even though the cultural touchstones that George references on this album are different than that of the artists that help establish this style of music. James Ferraro, Ariel Pink, John Mouse, Night Jewel. George doesn't really dabble that deeply in the 70s and 80s past pastiche that those artists sometimes do. Instead, Clanton has a strong affinity for the 90s, the pop, rock, and dance music of that time. And it really pours through on this new album in the mid-paced rhythms, the blissful atmospheres, the slow-burning angst that comes off of some of the vocals from this record. Sure, while a lot of Slide's production does pull from very contemporary, underground, internet-based music, and there's maybe a bit of Panda Bear mixed in there too, I'm hearing an almost easy equal amount of influence coming from 90s touchstones like Siamese Dream and Sovlaki and Screamadelica. There are some trip-hop rhythms that seem to work their way into these tracks too. And George successfully evokes this era of music, all the sounds and vibes that come with it, without necessarily embracing the production style and the instrumental palette either, as a great deal of this record sounds completely synthetic. Doesn't sound like there's a whole lot of guitar on this thing. Rather, Slide sounds like a deeply synthetic album, and beautifully so. The soundcraft on this record is actually pretty excellent. It is beautiful, it's dense, it's lush, it's psychedelic, it's overwhelming, it's orgasmic, especially on cuts like Make It Forever. The bulk of this track is littered with these enveloping synth chords, droning into oblivion against these very abstract and squiggly lead melodies. There's an explosive burst of synth layers and rhythms on the chorus that kind of explodes with the passion of the new radicals, but presented with the sonic density of My Bloody Valentine. When you come back again, we can go be and make it forever. I also like the driving rock rhythms and the grimy bass on the song Tie Me Down. It's a really gratifying track with some slacker rock frontman vocals. It's a little spare at points, but the track becomes one of the most intoxicating on the entire record. Once the song's heaviest synth layers blossom with some echo drenched synth leads. Despite a kind of innocuous intro, the song Dumb finishes as one of the most kaleidoscopic and noisy tracks on the entire record. The song transitions quickly into the next cut, Blast Off, which is uh, kind of a droney new age cut. I cannot emphasize the segue into this track enough as it feels just like an extension. It feels like I'm listening to the same track, but a more pillowy and blissful instrumental version. It's basically an extended outro of sorts. For the most part, that's the first five tracks of the album or so. Super beautiful, super compelling, very tight, infectious tunes with an addictive euphoria. So far, it is very good. I do like it a lot, even if a weak link in the chain has kind of presented itself at 
this point. That being the singing and the lyrics. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some vocal highlights on the album, but much of the time the vocals do have a somewhat boyish and underwhelming tone. And they can get lost in the haze of synthesizers on this album because they're mixed a little low or they're not that distinct, like on the opening of the track, Dumb. Plus, there are so many songs on this album about being in love or love on the rocks, which is a tried and true song topic, it's fine, but I wouldn't say George necessarily brings an interesting lyrical spin to this topic. The lyrics mostly feel like an emotional placeholder just to kind of fill space because for the style of music George is making, there should be a vocal there. Not to mention that I think he wants to consciously enhance the sort of sentimental and nostalgic vibe of the music. The title track gets central with a dance beat straight out of the 90s, a murky synth bass line, some saxophone leads as well. It's got a lot of nice sonic touches, a beat switch in the last leg, some wintry synth chords. But again, the vocals come off a bit weak on the track, the pacing feels a little weird as the song shifts from one section to the next as the momentum doesn't really keep up. The vocals left me feeling kind of underwhelmed on the song Monster 2, but the track clearly has a stronger melody and sense of direction. The the following track You Lost Me There is likable enough, but it's pretty much a more epic reprise of the track Make It Forever. So hopefully you really like that song because now it's louder, it's bigger, and it's two times longer, with slightly more expressive vocals. Now the album loops back around to this song because Slide is a concept album, a narrative album of sorts. Even though a lot of the lovesick and heartbroken lyrics on this album feel a little surface level, they do tell a story track to track, with George being lonely and living loose, then George wanting that long-lasting love with this person who he has in mind, then he's being tied down and tied to that person. The love and the relationship fractures with the song Dumb, and then there is kind of a separation point. The song Monster is all about regret and being with other people instead of being with each other. While you lost me there, even though it is a reprise, it does bring the same tune back with some more themes of love and longing and kind of just brings all the feelings of the album together and wraps them in a neat bow, I suppose. While also wishing for that person to come back and wondering if this love is meant to be, I guess. There is an encore interlude on the album and then a following track, an epilogue, I suppose. Walk Slowly, which is a pretty feel-good moment on the record with a nice sense of finality, even if when it comes to song structure, it is one of the weaker tracks on the record and does fizzle out with its ending. I do like the fun rhythms and the cheeky turntable scratches on the cut, though. Overall, I generally like this album a lot. I do think it does have its shortcomings, its flaws. There are moments where I think it doesn't go quite far enough, but I think there are a lot of good and promising things here. The production, the sound, the rhythms on this album, and some of the tunes are amazing. This album has a lot of passion, a lot of heart, even if I do think the vocals and lyrics kind of fall short. The love, romance, breakup, concept, narrative of the record was a cool and a fine idea, but did George go into it with the detail and the scope that I think he could have? Not really. For a concept album, this thing is kind of short of breath, and I enjoy quite a bit one of the shortest breakup albums of all time, and that is Tony Molina's Dist and Dismissed. So yes, at some points the vocals are kind of meh, the lyrics do feel a little surface level, they border on vapid, and with the wealth of sounds that Clanton presents during the first leg of this record, I think there could have been more diversity on this LP overall, more tracks, because George does sink quite a bit of this album's runtime into a few longer cuts, especially this reprise. This song and the track that it's building off of take up about a quarter of the album's runtime, which is a bit much, especially considering that the actual closing track of this thing feels like a non-statement. It just feels like the effort, the focus, and the passion of the record was applied onto these songs in a somewhat lopsided way, as there are quite a few tracks on here that feel almost unnecessary or just pale in comparison to others, and you can't really afford to have many snoozers or underwhelming moments in a track list that is so short in a runtime that doesn't really afford you a whole lot of breathing room. Enjoyed this quite a bit, wasn't blown away, not head over heels, but still wanting more and looking forward to what George is doing next, feeling a decent two strong seven on this thing, Tran. Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it, did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out, hit that up, or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, George Clanton, forever.